Thanks for joining us, Sam. Uh, has it sunk in yet that Exeter are reigning European champions and that you personally are European Player of the Year? And what has the last few weeks been like since lifting the trophy? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely sunk in now. Um, you know, the quick turnaround and, and the year that it's been, we've had to, you know, flip the switch straight into to Prem Rugby and, and then obviously um, two games coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time. So, um, yeah, it sunk in pretty quickly and um, it's quite nice to to not have too long to, to get back into back playing games because, you know, we could have just been happy with what happened last season. But um, I think what we've shown in the first couple of weeks that we're, we're really looking forward to the challenge of this year and, um, you know, trying to do it again. Great. And, and how are you approaching this season with the target on your backs? Do you think it will be more difficult or do you think it will be that you've got momentum and it will kind of flow? No, I think um, we, we spoke about already, you know, last year was great, but, um, you know, it is tougher to back it up, but we don't want to be the team that's, that's happy with, um, you know, competing and winning things for one year. We want to go, you know, back to back. We want to, to be putting our hands up again and, um, you know, kind of relish that that feeling that um, we were the dom dominant team last year and you know, not much has changed in, in our squad and um, not many new players have come in and, and we haven't lost any boys. So, uh, you know, we'll be as strong as we were last year. And obviously this year is a different format. How excited are you for that new format and what challenges do you think it will pose? Yeah, um, you know, it's kind of less less games. Um, they come come at you thick and fast, and you know we're we're kind of used to uh, playing Glasgow now, and and obviously playing Toulouse in the in the semi final last year. What was that? Only about three months ago. So um, it wasn't long since we played them play them last. But um, yeah, we're quite looking forward to the challenge. And um, two home games, two away games is is not much. So you kind of have to win. Um, away from home which is tough for any team in Europe um, but yeah we're looking forward to that challenge And as you say first up is, is Glasgow Warriors at home what are you expecting them to bring and how will you approach that game having played them a few times over the past few seasons as you said Yeah look they'll, they'll have a lot of their international boys back they've, they've been playing a lot um, in the Autumn Nations Cup which will, will bring a lot of experience and just from when we've played them in the last uh, two three years now they're a team that likes to play, likes to run the ball from, you know, from anywhere. So uh, they have caused us problems like that in the past when we played them a couple of years ago at their place. And you know, playing on um, the 4G brings a little bit different dimension to, to how they play and stuff like that. So, um, you know, they, they've got threats all over the park, but I think we'll be, you know, the team that we need to focus on ourselves. And, and obviously that, that showed last year, if we do just focus on how we play, um, teams can't really uh, stick with us. Exactly, and one of the teams that couldn't stick with you is obviously Toulouse, which you've got uh, away in round two. How yeah. we approach that? Um, will you be confident knowing that you, you've already beaten them, or will it be a, a case of being wary that they might be more up for it this time? Yeah, I think it's not that they weren't up for it the first time. I think that it will pose a different challenge. You know, it'll be a clean slate. Uh, it was a it was a tight game here when they came here, and you know our game plan was try and um, you know run them off their feet and uh, really try and fatigue them because they, they are a big pack, and if they do get into the game with their big runners and um, you know people like Cheslin Colby with, with getting on the ball and stuff like that, if you don't shut him down, you know you're going to have problems. And I think that will be the same again when we play them there. Um, yeah, I, I think our game plan will be similar again. You know we, we've got to look to fatigue them and. Um, put them under pressure in, in areas that may they may not have worked on the same same they, same way that we do. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see see what happens. And we were speaking to to Rob earlier, and he said that playing away at Toulouse isn't something that that you guys have experienced yet. How much are you looking forward to to going away to these sorts of venues and and playing those sorts of teams? Yeah, I think we, we do relish those those opportunities. You know. Um, it's one of the, the teams that we haven't played uh, away in France. You know, we've, we've gone to places like La Rochelle and, and some of that and got got wins and got results there. But um, to lose will be a new field for us. But um, these are the big games that you want to be involved in. Um, you know, they're 
to say that Toulouse aren't a, a European giant, you know, that, that's a place that everyone would like to go and play, um, you know, albeit with or without fans, you know, it'll still be a great occasion. You mentioned there about the fans. How excited are you to have them back when they do eventually return? And how much impact do you think they have in European games? Yeah, it's, it's massive. You know, everyone talks about those big European nights. And I think people don't really forget that it comes from crowds and it comes from the excitement that comes before the game, um, which, which 100% leads into your performance and um, how you approach those games. And, and they are the things that, you know, at top level sport, that's what we look forward to. And I, I, the lights go off. Shall I start that one again? Uh, I think we've probably got enough. If you could start your sentence again, that's fine. I'm not sure where you got to, but continue. Um, yeah, big Euro European nights like that with a crowd uh, is, is the games that we want to play in. Um, you know, to, to have the opportunity, hopefully soon, to have, I think, 2,000 uh, fans back at Sandy Park is great. Not just for us, but, um, you know, the fans as well. They've, they've missed, uh, you know, the, the best season that Exeter Chiefs have had in, in the most in the recent, well, in their history, really. So uh, to be able to have people that wanted to watch um, those big games last year back in is, is going to be amazing. And, you know, we, we talked about the, the environment of what makes a European clash and it being the fans. In terms of your, your memories of the Heineken Champions Cup clashes in the past, what would be your first memory of it, either watching it and then also then playing in it for the first time? Um, that's a good question. I think the one of my favourite games was the a couple of years ago we played Montpellier. Um, I was on the bench in the game away uh, where we when we turned them over and we had a great game away. But the one where we um, played them at home and I think it might have been a Friday or Saturday, Saturday night, it was... It was dark and, you know, the crowd just played such a massive part. It felt like um, a semi-final or a final. Um, and, and, you know, we just, we just dominated that game. And, and um, to be involved in, in such a you know, big win at the time, I think Montpellier were, to, were top of the top 14. Um, big French giants coming here. And, you know, we hadn't really performed in, in Europe and backed up performances. And to, to put out a statement like that that year was, was great. And... Uh, one, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, playing them. Great stuff. And we'll move on to kind of the, the quick fire questions. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of kind of youngsters coming through in, in Exeter Chiefs uh, squad at the moment. So, who would be your ones to watch this season, do you think? Um, to watch this season. I'd say uh, in the back row. Charlie Wright and uh, Roos Tuima, uh, very good, very different players. Roos is absolutely huge, um, you know, almost like in the in the Billy Billy Van Polo shaped mould. And uh, I think he's just turned twenty or twenty one. And you know, if if he can get some game time under his belt, he's he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And and then Charlie is is you know more my shape, my build, um, quick, uh, good over the ball likes getting involved and stuff like that. So I think they're, they're two to look forward to. Great. And uh, who is the hardest trainer in the squad? Hardest trainer, I'd say Jack Yendel. Um, Jack Yendel and Wits. I can't leave Wits out of it. Uh, but probably Jens, you know, he just doesn't skip any, any, any reps, any recovery. Uh, he, he seems to always have you know, time to banter and, and mess around, but he still 100% just does everything uh, that needs to be done, you know, to be club captain. I think he just epitomises that in, in, in his hard work. And who's the strongest in the gym, do you reckon? Uh, one of the young props, Pat Schickling. Um, absolutely. He actually went for the one rep match today, I think, on the bench. And 180, I think he, he got up or... I think his record was 176 and he went to, to try and do 180. And I saw him do 170 and it just flew up. So, yeah, probably Pat. Probably Pat. <laughs> Who's the fastest in the squad? Um, we've got quite a few quick ones. Uh, I'd say 
Cuffy when he's Cuffy or Shorty. Um, very different running styles. Shorty's acceleration is unbelievable, but I think once Cuffy gets going, if he's fully fit and he and he gets going, he's like a racehorse. I mean, 100 meters, I think he's he's absolutely rapid. Fair enough. Who do you think is the most skillful, whether that's with their hands or or kicking ability? Yeah, uh, I'd say Slady. Slady's passing off both hands um, is very good. I think Joe pushes him. You know, Joe would probably be a close second, um, but Slady kicking off both feet, uh, unbelievable. Uh, and passing off left and right is just his passing range is, is unbelievable. Nice. Who's got the best banter? Um, best banter. Uh, one, I like I like Stu Townsend. Stu Townsend's banter. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's just knows no limit, and it doesn't matter who you are. You know, he's coming at you. Whether you just come back from a World Cup or you know an uh, international camp or something like that, if you've done something wrong, Stu's the first one to tell you. Nice. And uh, who's got the biggest bromance in the in the squad? Um. Romance, Steven? Mm-hmm. Nah. Oh, maybe, maybe the two staffers, uh, Yanis and Jack. Uh, they do live together, but I think, you know, they didn't, they didn't know each other before they came here, but they haven't really left each other's side, so I'd say they're two. Fair play. Uh, who's going to be a future coach, do you reckon? Future coach? Oh, Sam Skinner. I'd say Skins has, has got all the qualities to. He's kind of, <laughs> he's kind of molded into like a Rob Baxter mold already. I'd say, but um, yeah, he his his knowledge and whether whether he'd look he'd want to or not. But he to me he does look like um, you know, that captain and then future coach. Um, I think he'd be very good at that.